All right, so this we will, we will do five or four or five slides in the next 10, 15 minutes because we have that time, okay? And the handouts will come next, uh, next I mean, basically Wednesday. Handout. So we are going to talk about physical layer concepts um, now. And um, previously I used to teach, as I said, the physical layer is part of the basic networking course, but now the basic networking course has um, a book which does not allow us to teach this, so I'm going to repeat much of it as to what we have done. So we'll talk about coding and we will talk about what is phase shift coding, coding, what is QAM, what is decibels. Then we will talk about channel capacity, Nyquist theorem, Shannon's theorem, Hamming distance. There is theoretical uh, concepts including error corrections. Then we talk about antenna, reflections, diffractions, and multipath and propagation. And some of the recent developments in physical layer, which are spread spectrum, code division, multiple access, OFDM. In turbo course. There are lots of um, new words here, but they will all become clear as we go along. But before we get into while, uh, any of these, first thing you have to understand is the spectrum. So all of the wireless is uses electromagnetic waves. All wireless waves are electromagnetic waves. And light is also electromagnetic wave. Electricity is also electromagnetic wave, <coughs> all right? But these are electromagnetic waves of different frequencies. For example, the electric current is has a frequency of what? Anybody knows the frequency of electric current here in the United States? Nobody knows? 60, and you have heard, what is the unit? Hertz. 60 cycles per second. The frequencies that we use for wireless are, we, we, we measure them in gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz. Giga is a billion, right? So the wireless frequencies that we use in Wi-Fi is 2.4 billion hertz per second, billion cycles per second. All right, light, is in terahertz. It's the same electromagnetic wave, but when the electromagnetic wave has low frequency, it cannot travel by itself, it, has, it needs a wire. When it becomes higher frequency, then it can travel in the air. When it becomes even higher frequency, it becomes light and travels in vacuum and so on and so forth, right? Actually, so, so the idea is all of these are electromagnetics, but they're in different parts of the spectrum. If you are in this part, that is the way wireless we use for radio. If you are in this part, that is the wireless we use for television. If you are in this part, that is the wireless we use for satellite. If you are in this part, we use wireless for your local area networks and wide area networks. And if you are in this part, that is the light. This is the red. Before that is the infrared. And after that is ultraviolet. All right, and so we will be talking mostly about these frequencies, somewhere from few hundred megahertz to few gigahertz, always less than 11 gigahertz. Why less than 11 gigahertz? Because after 11 gigahertz, the electromagnetic waves start traveling in a straight line they don't go around the buildings. So you cannot use it for things like cellular phone where you might be standing behind a building. Then they become more like light. Light cannot go behind a building. Right? Sound can. Sound actually is not electromagnetic but sound has a lower frequency. And um, so it can go around. Lower frequencies can go around. All right. Now, so there are other effects of frequency that we'll talk about later on. Just to tell you one, that the lower frequencies can go farther distances. 
So if you somebody gave you a spectrum in one megahertz or ten megahertz or something like that, they will go farther distances. But those are used for radio and television because they want to go 50 miles and 100 miles. And the higher frequencies which they cannot use are given to us, the technical guys, to say, okay, all right, can you use this for doing your data? Yes, we can. So we use 2.4 gigahertz for data, and then we have a challenge as to how we can go far with that one. If they gave us higher frequency than here, like they give us 60 gigahertz, it will not go very far. After one kilometer, we struggle to get it any further. So two things we know. If it is higher frequency, then it goes in a straight line. Second thing, it doesn't go very far. Two things you should remember, fundamentals. So lower frequencies are better for two reasons. One, because they can go around. Second, they go far. All right. So what does this frequency thing look like? They are basically sine waves. Right? You put a, throw a stone on water in a lake. What you see is a sine wave. And a sine wave has an amplitude, top to bottom, and a cycles per second. How many cycles per second? So if you count the number of peaks, that will tell you how many cycles you have. And if you stand at one point in the, in the lake, and then you see how many cycles have gone through, that is cycles per second, in one second. All right? So this has a different amplitude than that. They both have the same cycles. These two have same amplitude, but different what? How are these two different? Frequency. Their frequency is different, their amplitude is different. And mathematically, we write them down as A sine of 2 pi f t plus theta. f is the frequency, t is the time, pi is the constant, sine is the sine cosine, sine, and A is the amplitude. So this one will have half amplitude, and but the same f, this one will have different f's. All right, but what is theta? Theta is what we call the phase. If you take if this one and then you move it, it's zero is here at zero, this is zero is at some other place. Right? So they are different in phase, starting point. So those are the things we need to know about every signal. We need to know what is its amplitude, what is its frequency, and what is its phase. Okay, so let me see. If suppose the amplitude is small, what is wrong with that signal? Huh? It's a very weak signal, it will not go very far. On the other hand, if its frequency is very high, what is wrong with that? Yeah, it cannot go few kilometers, right? And, and then it may not be able to go behind a building. So we have to have the right amplitude, we have to have the right frequency. What about the phase? Well, suppose I have a signal which is this signal and somebody else has a signal which is exactly the same signal but at 180 degree phase, which means everywhere I have positive, they have a negative. And wherever I have a negative, they have positive. What will happen when the two combine? Cancel out. So the phase is important for canceling out the noise, for figuring out how to block. Right, so those are the three important variables. Amplitude, frequency, and phase. Now the frequency is measured in cycles per second, but since it takes so many words, we call it hertz because that's the guy who invented it, or invented the idea. So <laughs> hertz is simply cycles per second. All right, now the waves travel. So when you put a, throw a stone in the water, the waves travel. Similarly, the radio waves, when you start from an antenna, they travel. 
So what is the relationship between the distance and the frequency? Basically, if you have one cycle per second, they will travel certain amount in one second. So the distance traveled by one cycle is called the wave length. And it is very easy to see in water. You throw a stone in the water, takes two peak, the distance between those two peaks is the wave length. That is how much it will travel in one cycle. Right? So the distance between two peaks is the wave length. And if the wave length is lambda, then if the signal is traveling at nu, the nu times t, the t is the time, is lambda. T is the cycle time. And therefore, if you bring this t on the other side, 1 upon t is f frequency. Lambda f is nu. So you take any signal, takes its wavelength, take its frequency, multiply it together, you should get its speed. And all electromagnetic signal travel at the same speed in the same medium. In a different medium, they will travel differently. But if you take light or wireless, they all travel at the same speed. As long as they are in the same media. You change the media, they travel differently. So if you take the light in vacuum, there is a speed, 300 meters per microsecond. The wireless will travel at the same speed. But if you bring it into the air, the speed is different. If you take it into the fiber, the light speed is different. So the electromagnetic speed depends upon the medium. But once the speed is there, then you can, if given the frequency, you can calculate the wavelength. Given the wavelength, you can calculate the frequency. Sometimes they talk about the wavelength, sometimes they talk about the frequency. Generally, whichever is... Okay, well, I, I, I was going to make a statement. Let me just say this one. Generally, for the, wave, for, this, for, the, for the wireless, we talk frequencies. So when I say what signal you have, we say I have 2.4 gigahertz signal. In the light, we talk about wavelength. When you say what signal you have in the light, you say I have 750 nanometer. All right? But 750 nanometer can be translated into few terahertz by knowing the speed. Speed is 300 mi meters per microsecond. Very easy to remember and make sure that you remember it from now on. 300 meters per microsecond is the speed of light in vacuum. the speed of electricity in the wire is 200 meters per microsecond. So it's different, it's lower. Things like that, okay? So 300, microsecond per mi 300 meters per microsecond is same as 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second. That is the speed of light in free, free space. So given lambda, f, and nu, you can call it nu or v, but Lambda is the wavelength, f is the frequency, and nu is the speed. So you can calculate one from the other. And I will stop right there and we'll continue on this slide number six next time.